Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the Intro Swipe Images. It's one of the widgets in the key add-ons for Elementor Premium Collection. With this widget, you can create an introductory section that contains images set to rotate on their own. And the visuals you add are combined with a swipe-like transition effect, which is part and parcel of the widget, so you won't have to bother setting it up separately. We have an example here of this widget's use, shown in the form of an image. It's accompanied by a link underneath that will take you to the key theme homepage that uses the intro swipe images in a section before the header. As you can see, the idea is to let the images play out as a sneak peek into your site's content before visitors dive in. In essence, it's a pretty straightforward widget, and when I scroll down this page, you can see a kind of feature highlights list. It serves to showcase the most salient points. However, there's no need for us to dawdle here when we can check out the widget up close. And to do that, I'll open the link. And now we can see the images swipe up close. The duration of this presentation depends on the number of images you add. This one is intended to be relatively brief as the page has more content for visitors to view. And that is indicated by the text saying scroll, meaning there are other things beyond this introductory widget. And when I move down, the header appears. So in this instance, the intro swipe images occupies a section above the header. And if I were to keep scrolling, we'd find lots of other content here as well. All right, now that you have a better idea of how this widget can be used, we can start looking at how to set it up. Head over to the back end. Before I add the widget to the page, I want to check on something for the section that I'll be working in. And to help me do that, I'll open the navigator. So right click and select it in the drop down menu. Okay, with the navigator open, I'll click on section to open the options for editing it. Then in the layout tab under content width, I'll make sure the setting is full width. Giving the maximum amount of space to the intro swipe images will ensure this element really shines. Okay, next I can add the widget to the column in this section. If I click on the column in the navigator, we can see it's empty. That's where I plan to place the intro swipe images. And for that, I'll click here to open the element selection. Then start typing the widget's name, intro swipe images. There it is, drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. I can also close the navigator. I won't be needing it anymore. Okay. When we look at the options, we have this note before them saying, please note that this shortcut, i.e. widget, should be used only in the first section on the page. That's what we saw in the example. The intro swipe images was above the header. And that section should be full width. That's why I checked on my section settings before adding the widget to the page. All right, let's proceed to the options. Firstly, we can set the background image. I'm going to select something new instead of the placeholder image we have here. I have the images I want in my gallery already. It's these three. Create a new gallery. Now that I have a gallery, I can rearrange the images within it. I'll change the order just a bit. Okay, and insert gallery. The images will immediately appear on the page and the widget will automatically swipe through them. We can see there is a black frame. That's actually the background. And this notice about scrolling down is also something you get by default. But don't worry, this is all customizable. And you'll see all that as we go through the options. So the next thing we have is the option to pick the main image. The one we have right now is this dummy placeholder. I'll choose a replacement for it. I have the one I want in my gallery already. This is it. I'll be adding a PNG image. Select. Now just a moment. And there it is. I'm using a PNG image specifically so I'd have these transparent sections for the letters and around the semicircular shape. Okay, after this we have the scroll down text field. It allows us to change the notice text at the bottom of the element. For this, I'll erase the second word and have the notice just say scroll. Give it a sec for the images to change. There. And to go with this text notice, we have the scroll down icon. You can replace the default icon with something from the icon library. There is an extensive collection, or you can upload a custom SVG. That's what I'll do. Just a sec. This is it. Insert media. We need to wait for the images to flick through, and there. 
this huge line is actually my icon, which I will be adjusting shortly using the options in the Style tab. But before I do that, we have two more sections left in the Content Options tab. The first is Developer Tools. It contains just one option. If you switch it to Yes, then it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, the light grey text you see on the page. Then you can copy this text for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back to No. And under that, we have the Help section. It contains links to various helpful resources in case you need them. And that's all for the options in the Content tab. Let's move on to the Style tab now. Here, I'll skip down to the scroll down style section so I can adjust the icon first, so I don't have this huge line bisecting the image. To help me with this, I'm going to use the icon size option. The value you set here actually reflects the icon width, and the height gets proportionately reduced. Let me demonstrate. I'll set one pixel here, and now my icon has shrunk noticeably. It's one pixel wide, and its height has been reduced proportionally to retain its original ratios. Alright, with that done, let's see what else we have in the scroll down style section. At the top, we have the text color option. You can set any shade you like, and it will change the color of this text notice here. Let me set something lighter so we can see it better. For example, this. You'll want to have enough contrast against the image so the text can easily be read. I'll clear the change to restore the default white color. After that, there's text typography. It's a bundle of several options for adjusting the scroll text. I'll start by changing the font family. There are hundreds of fonts to choose from. I have a specific one in mind. Let me find it. There. Next, we have the font size option. I'm going to set 16 pixels for this. Then we can change the font weight. You have this whole list to choose from. I plan to keep the default setting. Following that, there is the option to transform the text to uppercase, lowercase, or capitalize it. Otherwise, you can keep it normal, which is how you type it in as well as the default setting. Then there is the style option where we can turn the text italic or oblique. After that, with the decoration option, we can add a line under, over, or through the text. To round out these options, we have the line height, letter spacing, and word spacing in case we need to make any spacing changes to the text. And that's it for the typography. Let me close this. The next thing we have is the text margin bottom option. It's for adjusting the space under the text, basically the gap between it and the icon. And you can see as I drag the slider, the bigger the value, the larger the gap that we get here. So for my design, I'll set 10 pixels. Following that, we have the icon color option. I don't plan on changing mine, but let me set a new color so I can show you the effect the change might have. There, we can see the line is red now. I'll clear this to restore the original color. The last option in this section is the icon size. And we already covered that one, so we can move on to the section we haven't looked at yet. The one above this, style. We only have two options here. One is the background color. By default, it's this black color that seems to frame my images. You can easily change it to anything you like, either by using the slider or by typing in a hex code. For the design I'm making, I'll use white as the background. Okay, and the second option here is the main image max width. It applies to this central image here. I'll reduce its width by setting 177 pixels as the value. And this is the look I get. With that, we covered all the relevant options. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful settings for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our Intro Swipe Images widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. So, you've seen how quick and easy it is to set up this element. Of course, as it's intended to serve as an introduction to your site or your page, it's only the start of your building work. You'll need to add more content that will follow it. Still, for the purposes of this video, we've finished what we set out to do, meaning our work is complete and I'll hit update to save it. Now let me refresh this page so we can see the element in action, animation and all. And here it is. The swipe action works perfectly and the images I set are there. Everything is as it should be. If I move down a bit so we can see, yes, the scroll notice and icon are there. Before we part, a quick reminder that the page we started from has all the information you need on the Intro Swipe Images widget. 
There's a link to the key add-ons plugin with all its widgets. You will also see an example of the design, which I copied for this tutorial, along with a link to the page where you can check it out up close. And under that, you have the widget highlights. Hopefully, both the page and the video have answered any questions you may have had. If there's something that's still unclear, or if you'd like to share a comment or suggestion, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe and be the first to learn about any new tutorials on our channel. Thank you for watching!